Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you're watching this around the world. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, I think it's safe to say this show is going to be quite a good one. Um, it's seen as the Venga in v Venga out um, debate round two. Um, I'm joined with DT, who I think I can guess what uh, side you're supporting tonight, mate. Pretty obvious, isn't it? <laughs> and I'm also joined with, as he calls himself, the Gov, who is... Uh, well, couldn't be more Bengal if you tried. How are you doing, mate? Evening. Yeah, I'm not doing too bad. Um, could be a little bit better after yesterday's result. Um, I'm going to come to the Gov first. So, a lot of pundits, um, Graham Sooness especially, um, was saying in yesterday's uh, post-match um, interview with Sky, saying at this moment in time, he thinks that Arsenal is being run like a business, not a football club. Do you agree with that? No. Um, he, he would say that. He's a, he's a shocking pundit. I don't know what he's doing on Sky. Um, we've had one bad result. It's the first game of the season. I mean, the overreaction is unbelievable. I, I cannot believe people are going mental already. There's, what, 111 points to play for. And people are throwing their toys out the pram. We've got two weeks of the transfer window ends. If you look at our bench yesterday, it, it was so strong. Add to that Giroud, Ozil, Koscielny. And our squad is, is right up there. And I think we will get top three. Possibly, if we're lucky with injuries, we'll win it. Well, I mean, um, DC, I can't remember you laughing um, quite a bit there. Um, I mean, we, I mean, me and yourself were at the game yesterday. For the first time, probably, I, I mean, especially, obviously, we've only had one game of the season so far, but, you know, the chanting at the end of spend some effing money, mm -hmm. um, there were people going up to the dugout, um, you know, spend some money. And then, believe it or not, it's the same guy who's done it three times. Mm -hmm. In a row. Um, um, personally, I think Governor might have been watching the game with that box on his head yesterday. Don't understand what he saw. One game. Are you mad? It's been 12 years, mate. Um, Where did you get one we, game from? We, we were 10 undefeated before that game. Listen, let me explain something to you, right? In the last ten, since 2010, we picked up a possible six points out of 21 in our opening league game. Why? I'll answer why, right? Because we're always unprepared. Why are we always unprepared? Because the manager doesn't go out and buy the players necessary before the season starts. He's the man that says the transfer window should shut before the season starts. But yet, he's the one manager that's never prepared before the season starts. How the fuck are you going to drink that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's got to be having a bubble, isn't he? Look at the state of him. Why do you need to hide your face? I just, you know, I'm not like you boys. Well, not so much the um, Liam, but yourself and, you know, Mems. You want to sort of be your Z-list celebrities at Arsenal. Oh, Nothing really? Nothing against it. Nothing against it. Yeah. Like, I'm not into last it. Time, last time you was on, you said it was because of repercussions and you didn't want to show your face because yeah, well, I, know. I, don't, I can't be asked with the abuse but, then you'd have, but, but you'd have to go to games for you to get beaten up wouldn't you <laughs> I go to plenty mate Do you? Where, where was you yesterday could have made it I can't make many home games okay. I go in, you go to plenty but you can't make many home games make your mind up I'll see you at Sorry. Sunderland away you'll see me at Sunderland away see how you far in November, is Sunderland United away I'll see you oh, there my Lord. oh my this, this is just I want you, in a minute, we're going to go through a load of questions, all right? We're going to go through a few questions. And it's... <laughs> I mean, I'd be impressed if you can eat that banana through the cardboard box. Oh, oh God. He must have a fucking... He's quite used to getting... Sucking on things, isn't he? So, <laughs> sucking on lemon. No. So, 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 you, 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 want ask, you want to ask, right? Hang on. No, 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 listen, listen. No, 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 no. You tell me. No, 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 you tell me. A couple of minutes. It's my turn to speak now. Go on, I'll let, you, I'll let you talk. I'll let you talk because... You WOBs, you want to talk about... You say we talk about the past, so let's talk about the last three years. So we've got 2014, 
we finished fourth. 2015, we finished third. 2016, we finished second. Add to that two FA Cups, and we are improving every year. Granted, in <laughs> Europe, that's, that's facts. No, it's I'm not facts. You facts there. That's not, not my facts. Opinion. You're not giving me facts, right? That's, let me that, let, let That's league positions improving every year. Shh. Now you be quiet. Yeah. Per Mertesacker, who is now our club captain, which we will get onto as well, said that finishing second was false. We were lucky. Washington. We, no, we were unlucky. We were unlucky. Ten points or something, weren't it, out of our last, how many games was it, ten games or something? How's that unlucky? Injuries top of the league it, at Christmas. It top, of the, yeah. top of the league at Christmas, and come May, we're ten points behind Leicester. How the fuck is that unlucky? unlucky? Please explain to me how that's unlucky. A few games, we were proper unlucky. We should have won it. What, what, which that ones was that? Was, was that the game against Man United when we lost to their kids? Or was that the game against Swansea when we bottled it at home? Would you kind of elaborate on what games we're on? You, know, you, you guys seem to think we, we have a divine right to win every game. No, we don't. We don't, do, we don't expect that. All we want is our club to be a club again. But I've, Not I've a just said, we're, we're Not improving a every Listen. fourth, third, second. If we carry on like that, we'll win the league this year. Listen, be quiet, will you? Seriously, don't talk dribble. Okay, that's, just because we finished four, listen, 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 if you want facts, yeah, this league this season is different to any other because of the grade of managers that you have. You are one of the people that was mocking Jurgen Klopp, yeah, the same Jurgen Klopp done a number on us yesterday and at 4-1 was mugging your messiah off, yeah. When we went 4-1 down, what was Arsene Wenger doing? Doing exactly what we're doing now, sat down. When we went 4-2, what did Jurgen Klopp do? Got straight up, went mad, pushing his players, g and them on. You watch him, you watch Simeone, you watch Conte, you watch Pep Guardiola. Every single one of them are a better manager than Arsene Wenger. No. No. 110%. You can sit here, you can sit here as much as you want and try and fabricate everything to be in your little bubble about the FA Cup and the last three years, etc., etc. Let's look at Arsene Wenger as a whole over 20 years. Fantastic. Right? And I'm going to put this to you straight. 20 years, right? And I want you to answer me this very simply. Two questions, right? One, no Champions League in 20 years. That's one question. Why? Two, in the last 20 years, Arsene Wenger has won nine trophies. Don't include the, the uh, Community Shield because that's exactly what it is. It's a community trophy. It's for charity. It's a friendly match before the season starts. We're talking major trophies out of the four that we go for. Okay? Carling Cup, FA Cup, Premiership, Champions League. He's won three Premier Leagues and he's won six FA Cups, nine trophies. You sit there and you go, nine trophies over 20 years? Not too bad if you were a smaller club, but this is Arsenal. And then you break it down properly and you say, out of those nine trophies, seven of those were won more than 12 years ago. So it's fair to say Arsenal's reign when he was decent, was, is, is behind him. And not just behind him, but even when he was winning things, he was making mistakes. That cost us. And the reason why he got away with those mistakes is because there were the league titles. There was an invincible. So it, it just never got brought up. It never gets mentioned. It happens. Same happened to Sir Alex Ferguson. But Sir Alex Ferguson... Piss is all over Arsene Wenger as a manager. All day. No. He, Sir Alex Ferguson's had, what, four or five years more than Arsene Wenger yeah, yeah. as a manager? Lastly, I mean, as you go, go back to the um, governor, how long do you want Arsene Wenger to stay on from, from now? Do you, you know, I mean, it's his last season in the contract. Do you, do you think you know, he's going to get offered another two or three years, or do you want him to stay on for as long as possible? I do, but even if he left, 
you know, this was his last year. I think it's great. He's signing sort of, he's still signing the youngsters that could become good. He's not like Ferguson, who left United, you know, struggling. They've not been in the Champions League since he left because he wasn't focusing on the future. It was more, he was looking after his legacy, whereas Wenger's still signing these youngsters that we're going to benefit from in five to ten years' time, which I think shows his love for the club. And I think he deserves at least another two-year contract extension. Absolute bollocks. But do you, think, do you think he's bad? We're playing, at the end of the day, Rob Holding. I mean, the, the lad was playing a few months ago in a relegation team with Bolton, and he makes his debut for Liverpool. You know, first huge home game of the season. Do you think that's right? I mean, looking at the end, I mean, Murta Saka, Gabriel, if any team lost two, plus their main centre-back was missing, they're going to be playing an inexperienced youngster. That's our three main centre backs missing. No, no because we can't have five, no. six world class centre backs. It's no. a twenty-three man squad. You can have four, five centre backs. He's part of that squad. He's probably fifth choice, but that's who we had to play. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. He could have played Koscielny yesterday. I no. That's another thing on Twitter. I've had a lot of people saying, "Oh, why is Koscielny not playing? Urzel not playing?" It's because he's resting them. If they had got injured, imagine the abuse Wenger had got. Oh my God. Answer me a question. Go Answer on. me a question. Last season in 2015-2016, sorry, Bakary Sanya played 56 games in all competition. Right? Lauren Koscielny played 52. Bakary Sanya played on Saturday. Lauren Koscielny was given the, the day off. We'll see, it, we'll see it Christmas then. Who's struggling? Don't, listen, listen. Don't, don't, no, don't avoid the question. Don't avoid the question. Right? I've just said to you, Bakary Sanya played on Saturday. Yeah. Right? What was, your, what was your question? My God Almighty. Why did Wenger rest Koscielny and allow him an extra week when he knew we needed him? If Murtasaka was fit, if Gabriel was fit, fine. No Arsenal fan would actually mind because we've got the experience cover in place. Okay? But when we got put in the situation we did, yeah, that should have been the point where Arsenal turns around to Lauren Koscielny and says, listen, I know you've only been back a week, but I need you. Okay? It's, the it's club, not that easy. It's yes, not it, that easy. Is. Listen, this is not 1980. Okay? We do not, footballers are not fat slobs anymore. They don't go on pre-season jolly-ups and come back overweight, out of fit people. All right? Professional footballers are trained professional athletes. They go on pre-season and they train while they're on holiday. Even Arsene Wenger himself a couple of weeks ago and said, when players come back from pre-season, you don't have to work with them like you used to because they come back fit. The only thing they're missing is match sharpness. But the only way you're going to get match sharpness... Is by playing. So what he should have done, Koscielny, right, I'm going to stick you there, and then you look at the set of who's available, you're going to have to go with Callum Chambers because he's the one with premiership experience. And he would have been fine alongside Lauren Koscielny. But you put two boys, first game of the season against Liverpool in front of 60,000 people, and you stick them in the heart of the defence. And that man is getting paid eight million pounds a year to make them ludicrous decisions. The, oh, guy, I know. the guy is on twenty-three grand a day. I know what you're saying, but in in the long run, it'll be the right choice. Why will it be the long run? Why will it? I see you put a tweet up earlier on. I think no, you boys have got a bit of an agenda against Wenger. Our agenda, our agenda, right, is getting Arsenal Football Club to where it should be. Okay, because we were laughing stock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I just come in quickly? I mean, Gavin, do you, do you want Arsene Wenger to do well or Arsenal to do well? Because, yeah, yeah I'm not just putting it to you, but I've seen a lot of people recently, even the, you know, if you're Wenger in or Wenger, especially Wenger in, it just seems to be that, all right, you're defending Arsene Wenger, and I can, I can see the points of it, you know, what he's done for the club, I mean, it's, it's fantastic as a whole, and the legacy that he's leaving. But then again, some people are saying his legacy is actually being tarnished for, for what is going on in the league. You know, I mean, what, what's your view on it? Do you, you know, are you more of a wanting Wenger to do well or Arsenal? No, well, when Wenger's the manager of Arsenal, you want both of them to do well. But I'll always, Arsenal's always first. I know, I know some of the WOB say, oh, it's just, you know, you support Wenger, not Arsenal. That's not true at all. 
it just happens to be he's the manager, and in our opinion, he's doing a good job with the club. How is he doing a good job? How? You sit there, right? You sat there earlier and you said to me, we've progressed season upon season. Yes? Last three years, yes. Right. Explain to me then why our points total has gone lower and lower over the last three seasons. You can't say that. You know, it's, there's different teams in the league. It's, you know, but hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. You want me to accept that we've gone from fourth, third to second without, yeah, even though there are contributing factors to that, like Spurs falling away so badly as they did. Yeah, like all the other teams not um, being on it last season the way that they were, etc. You you won't take none of that into consideration. Of You're so never well. just going, no, we finished fourth, we finished third, we finished second. Well, End of know, story. And I've just said to you, over the last three years, our points total has gone down. And do you know what's key about this? Everyone keeps saying to me, but he signed Petr Cech, but he signed Meza Ozil, but he signed Alexi Sanchez. Yeah, we were getting more points before we had them. You, you can't. It doesn't you matter can. about the points total. Yes, you can. I tell you what it's, it is. You no, buy players it's, like Meta Urzel, right? You, you buy players four. like Meta Urzel. Let me let me answer your question. Listen, listen. Let me answer buying you. players like Meta Urzel, it's like buying a Ferrari and then not affording petrol to run it. <laughs> What's let, the point? Let, let me answer your point then. Go on then. If you finish fourth, you're the, be you're the fourth best team in the league. If you finish third, you're the third best team in the league. If you finish second, you're the second best team in the league. It doesn't matter how many points you've got. You've got different clubs coming up and down from the championship. You've got the lower clubs with bigger transfer budgets, narrowing that gap to the top teams. No, 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 no. Yes. No. The no. league table does not lie over 38 Isn't games it? last year. We were the it does lie. It, the does, it does lie because the simple fact is, right, until 35 games in, right, any honest Arsenal fan will say that over 35 games last year, as much as, and as painful as it is to say, Tottenham were better than us last season. Over not, over, not over 38 games, though, were Over 35 games, it's, Tottenham were the better side. It's a 38-game season. Fans, Arsenal fans, no matter how hard it would have been and how, much, how painful it would have been all summer to listen to them go on and on and on, right? We would have had to sit there at the end of the season and say, do you know what? They were better than us. But the fact was that last goal from Chelsea with Hazard and everything that happened, they just capitulated. We didn't deserve second. Per Mertesacker himself said, we didn't deserve second. Yeah. And while we're talking about him, let's ask you a question about the captaincy and how much of a joke Arsenal's captaincy is, is being treated now. We can go, let's talk about some of the great captains all the way back to Frank McClintock. Tony Adams to Patrick Vieira. Yeah, some leaders. Real men. And now, it's like they're passing it around for fun. Like it's a bit of a, you know, oh, you've done all right today. You have a go, you know. Oi, Theo, here you go. It's your, you've been here for so long. I know. We're only playing Chelsea in one of the big games of the fucking season. But it's fine. You have the fucking captain's armband. Doesn't matter, does it? Do you think Tony Adams or Patrick Vieira would have given up their captain's armband just because someone's been at the club for a few years? Bollocks. Thomas Vermaelen wasn't even in the team. Captain. Mikel Arteta. What a joke that was. The guy goes and gets paid by Arsenal Football Club to take his coaching badges and then he fucks off to Man City with Pep Guardiola. Shows what he thinks of Arsene Wenger, doesn't it? And now you go and give it to Per Mertesacker. Who's not even going to be on the pitch for five months? Mockery. And that's Arsene think... Wenger that has made this club a mockery. And I'll tell you how bad it is. Rival fans, rival fans love Arsene Wenger. And I'll tell you why they love him. Because they know that we're, while we've got him, we're going to win fuck all. Let me that's turn why. to that point on the captain. I think it's not just an Arsenal thing. If you look at a lot of clubs now, it's not the same as 20 years ago where you have all these characters. You know, footballers are looked after too much now, so you don't have that character building in a lot of squads. You still have captains. You still have a player as your captain that is your leader and plays every single week. Your captain is your leader. He plays every week. Who, yeah. did, Arsenal, who did Arsenal have to turn round to yesterday? I was there and I could see it. They were looking round and they were just like, like I told you, at 4-1, they're looking to Arsene Wenger 
and the man sat on his hands. £23,000 a day that man earns, £8 million a year, and he sits on his hands. How can you draw inspiration from that? How can you get any kind of guidance from that? You look at Jurgen Klopp on the sidelines, and you know you're getting inspiration. Hold on, no, you're we, getting we, we were four one down, and we almost got back to four four. So they must, oh, have, been a, they must have been that fight and passion in the players listen, to get. Listen, you know, listen. The second, goal, go down the second goal. Sick. The second goal was lucky. The second goal was lucky. It was a massive deflection that took it away from Midlay. And the third one, they happened. You put a decent ball in the box. Why was Santi Cazorla not starting in the first place? He, Look at the difference he made when he came on. So why was he not playing from the start? He's a leader. He would have been my captain. Oh, my life. So I'm not going to lie. I mean, I was right by where the Mane goal was yesterday. And he went right into that far right-hand corner, came back out again and smacked it straight top left corner. You know, I'm not blaming Rob Holding or Chambers at all. But you've got to be looking at it, Governor, thinking, you know, that at this moment in time, and, it's, you know, there are Arsenal fans who I speak to now who... They've gone past the stage of, you know, frustration or anger. They're actually just getting tired of it. There are literally no words. You know, it's not even repetitiveness. It's just kind of taking the piss. You know, do you, as much as the FA Cup wins, right, they were fantastic, you know, and you cherish them as an Arsenal fan, you've got to be looking at the league. And, you know, if, you, if, we're, not, if we're not winning the league, you know, with, with Leicester or, you know, Spurs around... You know, do, you, do you see us any hope even challenging for first? Do you think we can win the Premier League this season well, yes. with the team we've got? Yes. There's I think absolutely it's... not. How can we go from the team that we were last year that bottled the league, right, our best chance and bottled it, right, and then you take out of that as well players that are now injured as well on top uh, of it. Yeah, hang on, DT. Right? We, how, we, we... how is this team, how is this team Right now, this team here is going to win the league. Why? We, Why? We will, we will finish above Leicester this season. And they were the only team that finished above us last year. So why oh can't we win the league? God. Oh, my God. So if, if we finish fifth and Leicester finish sixth, will you be like, oh, well, we finished above Leicester. They won the league last year. They've had a worse season than us. You're not understanding you're my point. You don't understand. You're saying you can't win the league. Day. You, you, you don't understand. You saying we can't win the league. We will finish above Leicester, who were our main challengers last year. But they won't be this season. The they won't be this season. Exactly. They're another Blackburn. Exactly. Yeah. They won't. They're be not season. our main challengers. Listen, wake up, wake, wake up, seriously, because our main challenges now are a team that's playing right now: Man City, Man United, Tottenham, Liverpool. Yeah. Chelsea one more. Chelsea one new up. That's five teams. Include us in that. That's six. Yeah, no chance. Have you seen the difference these teams are? Did you see Hang the Man United yesterday? Out of them six teams, who finished on top of them six teams last year? Listen, listen. No, answer my question. This who season, top out of them six it's teams? not about last season. Stop living in the past. It's about right now. Okay. Man City did not have Pep Guardiola last year. Jurgen Klopp now has his first full season at Liverpool. Chelsea did not have Conte. Man United did not have Mourinho. Yeah? Do you not understand? Is this not registering in your brain? Okay? I, li I see some of the things that you tweet, and I don't know whether you're actually doing it for retweets, you're serious, or you're just plain idiotic. You contradict everything you say. You got caught out on Twitter the other day, and you couldn't even answer the question when someone put it to you. So Sorry, what I'll, was that? I'll ask it. You tried mocking the Wenger Out Brigade the other day by saying the, if the Wenger Out Brigade were managers, we would have had XYZ playing for us. Meet you. Yeah? <laughs> someone went and found your tweets from a couple of years ago. Who did you say you wanted? Meet you. Oh dear, forgot what you said, did you? So you what? tried mocking people that want Wenger out and making us look like dickheads, when in fact you yourself wanted the man. Answer I that. didn't say, no, no, hang on, I didn't say I wanted him. I did a little list of who I thought would be brought in. I never said I wanted him. I stated who was in and out. I've seen the tweet. I've seen yeah. the tweet. I've it seen was, the tweet. It was you, my opinion. It wasn't who I wanted. You wanted, listen, what about, let, let, 
let's let's deliberate about this one. What about um, Roberto Martinez? <laughs> Do you remember that one? Can you remember? Can you remind me how that ended up? Roberto Martinez actually got sacked and replaced by Ronald Koeman, who I said that was that was totally taken out of content of what I said. The question the from me to you was, who would you want as an Arsenal manager? You replied Koeman. I said I'd prefer Martinez, which See, I stand you, by. Why would you have preferred Martinez? See, if you if Arsene Wenger was to leave, right, end of this season, Arsene Wenger leaves, yeah? Who would you have as manager? I've told you before, I don't think either of them are good enough. Who would I have as manager? Um, possibly Steve Bold. <laughs> Please, explain. It, it, the got listen. Love Steve Bold as a player. Yeah. Love it. But I tell you right, he he's Arsene Wenger's right hand puppet. That's what he is. He sits on that light touchline and he's Arsene Wenger's bitch. He doesn't get up. He doesn't say anything. He was one of the most amazing defenders. Brilliant defender. Right up there with your Tony Adams and your Martin Keowns, etc., etc. Right. But yet, why is our defence so shit? That, that was a bit of a tongue-in-cheek comment, but um, I, I struggle to find anyone to replace Wenger because it's so hard to replace him. Why is it hard who, to replace him? Who, who can we get who's going to do a better job than Wenger? Diego Simeone. He's not available. Is he, is he good enough? Is he, he's got no premiership experience. Doesn't matter. He's been to two Champions League finals in the last three years. He's won the league where he actually... He actually broke round with If it's for Premier League experience, if it's for Premier League experience, why not like someone like Eddie Howe then? I mean, why, why, why Steve Bowles? Too, too. I think it's too soon for Eddie Howe myself. Well, I, I think it is as well, but I'm just, you know, governors say that, you know, no Premier League experience. What, why Steve Bowles instead of, I don't know, Eddie Howe or, or, you know, a few years maybe Ronald Koeman? Um, it's hard for me to imagine one of them as our manager. I just can't see it. I can, oh. can they attract a Meza Erz or a Sanchez, someone like that? I, just, oh. I can imagine us ending up. I mean, if Wenger had come to us in what 1996, we could be a Villa, a Nottingham Forest. No, we wouldn't. We could be one of them clubs. What do you mean we could have been one of them? You're disrespecting the history of Arsenal Football Club. You're no, coming no. on like we were some mediocre League One side and Arsene Wenger walked along and went, da da! Before, no. Five years before Wenger took over, I think we were averaging seventh slash eighth position. That's it's not Aston Villa nor Nottingham Forest, is it? And, Leeds, and please, Leeds. please, please, can I just say something as well? Don't mention Aston Villa and Nottingham Forest in terms of mocking us. Because both of those clubs have won a fucking Champions League. We haven't. I'm saying we could have ended up slipping down the division. We wouldn't have slipped down the division. We, we are the lo along with Everton, we are the longest serving team in, in Football League. We've never been relegated. So why all of a sudden, in your world, before Arsene Wenger come along, made you go, do you know what? It's lucky he come along because we'd have been fucking relegated. I'm not, I'm not, because you know, five yeah. years before Arsene Wenger come along, we'd won a league title. Yeah, and we'd only lost one game that season, very close to being invincible. Two years before that, we'd won a league title. I think it was two years before that, we'd won uh, a European Cup in the, the Cup Winners' Cup over in Copenhagen with Alan Smith. You're going on like with some little mediocre team. Are you mad? We wouldn't have been relegated. We wouldn't have been where these, these are now. We'd be better off staying at Highbury, we would have, because we've sold our soul and we were promised dreams, and we've been mugged off by Ivan Gazidi, Stan Kroenke, Arsene Wenger. Every single one of them no. are culpable. Every don't one include culpable. Wenger in that. Don't include Wenger in that. Of course you will. Listen, a few right. years ago, a few years ago, there was the age-old debate, which was, who's to blame? Is it the board? Is it Wenger? A lot of people sided with Wenger and said, it's the board that ain't giving money. Now the board come out and say, Wenger can spend whatever he wants. Have it. If you identify the player, off you go. There's the money. We don't care. Stan's got the money. He says, there you go, have it. But yet we still don't buy the players that are needed. Arsene Wenger right, said, Arsene Wenger said before the end of last season, the reason why we lost the title is because we lacked a goal scorer. Right? 
We started our first game of the season yesterday and we still haven't got a goal scorer. Whose fault's that? I'll tell you what, realistically, last summer, there was not a striker available for us to get who would improve our squad. Oh my. All, a top, top world-class striker was not available and it's a similar story this summer. What do you, you mean? Know, the Lewand- Lewandowski, players like that, we cannot get. At this, at this current moment. Well, let me, listen, let's, let's say for argument. I don't think players really want to join Arsenal, to be honest. Exactly. This is one of the problems. A lot of players now are not wanting to join. We got rejected by Jamie fucking Vardy, for fuck's sake. But Leicester what? City, are you mad? And, and there, there's a point, actually, because you mock about the history of Arsenal, but yet one of our best strikers ever signed for Arsenal from Leicester in that period when you said we were shit. Alan Smith. And there was players that even turned around and said, if they were in Jamie Vardy's position, they would have walked to the Emirates. Jamie Vardy rejected us. Nah, you're mad, mate. You're mad. I think, I think he knew he wasn't good enough. Oh, my life. Is that what you really think? Listen, Alexis Sanchez and Meza Ertel will be gone by next year. If, yeah, when if Wenger doesn't sign his new contract. Not nothing to do with Wenger. Absolutely nothing to do with him. They are they are stalling on a new deal because Wenger's not committed. Once Wenger signs that deal, <laughs> absolute bullshit. No, absolute their bullshit. agents have come out. I can tell said, you now, the rumours about Meza Urzel and Alexis Sanchez is bullshit. They've already agreed their deals in principle. There's a few clauses in yeah. there and whatnot. Yeah, they've agreed they, it, but they it's need a, Wenger it's to a, commit. It's got nothing to do with Wenger. It's got so nothing they to do with him. So they, they, were not, they are not signing because they are not seeing any progression. They are not seeing any form of going forward. They were sold dreams. Do you remember the quotes from Robin Van Persie four years ago while he left? And we all uh, mocked him and we all slagged him off. And yes, we do still hate him, etc. How's his career going now? Doesn't matter. But everything he says starts to ring true why he did leave. Because he was told things that we didn't like. And they were not going in the direction that we wanted to. Ivan Gazidis said that by 2015, was it two, yeah, 2015, we'll be right up there with Bayern Munich, etc. We're a million miles away from them teams. Okay. Right. Touching we on can't your even point fucking Wenger, Nesta touch on your point about Wenger, he gets the absolute best out of players. Can you name a player who we've sold... Who has gone on to play per, in, in, in a personal sort of a personal uh, rating, sort of better than what they did when they played for Arsenal? Ash, Ashley Cole. Similar, similar ability. No. Ashley, Ashley Cole left. Ashley Cole left. Won Premier League titles, Champions. I'm not saying. I'm not talking about how much they won. I'm saying their their ability and their performance has it improved under another manager. I can't think of any in 20 years. Carlos Vela. No. Still poor. What do you mean, no? He set Spain alight. He couldn't even get on the pitch with Arsene. Why is, Joel, why is Joel Campbell not playing, playing at the moment? What's Joel what Campbell done wrong? Explain to me what um, Arsene Wenger's done for Theo Fio- Walcott's development over the last 10 years. I've asked you a question. Can you name a player he's gone to play? I've answered. What, Carlos Vela in 20 years? Is that it? Carlos Vela's one that's played better. And you think, actually, Cole played better. Ashley Cole, Ashley Cole's gone off. Look what he done for Chelsea. Thierry Henry left and, and won trophies with Barcelona. Yeah, he was a better. He, his best was at Arsenal. His best yeah, was under Thierry Wenger. Henry's was best. But what I'm saying is, is that what they do at other clubs is irrelevant for what they do at Arsenal. My point is that Wenger gets the very best out of players. No, he don't. Right. What's he got out of Theo Walcott? As my boy Troop said, all he's done in 10 years is grow a beard. What's Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain done in the last five years? We signed, the, we signed the great Brazilian prospect in Wellet and Silva. He's gone back after God knows how long of never playing. What about all these Japanese players that we were signing? Inamoto, Park. In what did say? We got to Kuna Nasano on the way, mate. Oh, yeah. Kuna Nasano. Bullshit. Listen, I've got some questions as well because... People got a load of. Where did I put? Tweet, tweet in your questions about DT. has got some. Um, I've got some. Wait, tweet about the MPO Edwards or at DJ DT or Arsenal Governor. Um, just uh, it's uh, well, we've got over a thousand live viewers. 
um, in the show. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. Hello, <laughs> girls. How are we doing? Now I feel better. I've got a disguise on. Let's get going, shall we? Can't be a bit of Coke Zero. Let's go, boys. It's the governor. <laughs> Let's get some questions in, shall we? Right then. I think we're dress. Let's have a look. Ooh. I need to take my glasses up. Right, we're going to go right. you got some questions for me, governor. Fire oh, away. Yeah. Fire away. I've got so many, I'm trying to get to the start of them. This is from the Arsenal View at JDL3. Do yep. you consider yourself a tra traitor considering you sell the club out for a check? What check's that? What check? I pay my way, I go to Arsenal week in, week out, pay thousands. Next. Why do you, as someone with zero football business experience, think you can make a huge decision and call to get rid of the manager? Am I the only one? And that's from Jack Truth AFC. Oh, what a surprise. <laughs> How are you doing, Jack? Have you got your hair cut now, mate? <laughs> I bet you had nightmares when I just came in saying hello, boys and girls. <laughs> Jesus Christ, you think that because we have no actual experience as managers, we can't turn around and know what's going on. P.A., will ya? Arsene, gets, Arsene Wenger gets paid £8 million a, a, a year and he hasn't got a fucking clue what he's doing. So anyway, right. Uh, Guna ZN says, why are you so fucking delusional? Next. I'm asking, I'm generally going through the questions one by one. Um, He's asking why, he thinks you're delusional, so well, can you explain why? Or, or he's, entitled, he's entitled to his opinion, but I'm just backing the, backing the manager for the club I support. Okay, right. Someone says here, speaking as an outsider, they're a Liverpool fan actually, they put... Uh, the chant, one Arsene Wenger. You better hope that's right, because if, there, if there's another one of him, you're fucked. That's yes. from another fan. Well, that's not much of a question. I'm just saying exactly what people are going through. Right, let's go through them all. I've got so many. Um, a. Hey, scene asked how Wenger's balls tasted in your mouth. But I don't... Any, any, any sensible questions, or...? Any. But... <laughs> Uh, this is from the Guna Talk. He says, Arsene Wenger managed a football club and a team at Highbury. Now he manages a business at the Emirates. Is that, is that a question? Yes, that is a question. Say it again. Arsene Wenger managed a football club and a team at Highbury. Now he manages a business at the Emirates. What's your thoughts? Why is that? Um, well, it's not, not much of a question, really. He's just stated his opinion. Well, no, he's asking you, why do you think that is? Why do you think that's true? Why do you think he was successful and he had a team and he had hunger and he had passion and drive and knowledge? When Sadly, we that, that's the way football goes, and it has become more of a business. No, that's it's not become more of a business. Club. So what? You're happy with Arsenal Football Club being a business? No, I'm saying that's how football has gone. So we you're part... accepting that we're a business. And you're, that's what you're accepting then? No. We are right. a business within a football club. You have to have a business side in it, of course. Listen, everyone knows you have to have a business part of it, but football comes first. Winning trophies come first. But for Arsene Wenger and Stan Kroenke and everyone else, all that's important is the money. Yeah. I've got um, another question for you from, from uh, Jack Truth AFC again. Oh, here he goes. Um, do you see yourself as a follower or a supporter? Do I see myself as a follower or supporter? I'm a lover. Love Arsenal Football Club. Been going since 1986. No one can question, question anything. I've been to more games than you lot have had hot dinners. I've forgotten more about Arsenal than you lot know. You know, you, you claim to be a supporter, but the definition of a supporter is one that backs a sports team. At the moment, the, I don't see much backing. Support the team, not the regime. There was oh, a very famous fan with them slogans on it last year. You do not have to support the manager 
to support the club you love. All right. Just ask the fans. Think... Ask the fans. Ask the old school fans that had the problem with Terry Neal back in the day, and they went and had the meeting down at his little town hall with the board members, and then a week later Terry Neal was sacked because the board used to listen to the fans and used to respect the fans and understand that the fans had a voice. Now we don't have a voice. We're just cash cows. I've got a question from you for much Arsenal. How can you defend this transfer window? No recognised centre-back brought in, no recognised striker brought in, no squad depth. Well, I think I've answered that in the how strong our bench was on, on Sunday. And plus, with the players to come back, and also there's two and a half weeks left of the transfer window. But the, you... season, but the season started yesterday. Should the should the dealings not have been done yesterday? He's working on it. He's working every hour a day. I bet he's up 18, 19 hours a day working. What on are you going on about? He spent all summer in France commentating for the Euros. He's he's allowed a holiday. Uh, excuse me. He's on eight million pound a year. You don't have no fucking days off, mate. Especially yeah, while, when there's deficiencies in the team. Yeah, while, he's doing, while, he's doing that, while he's doing that TV work, he's also working like he was last year when he signed, really? uh, no, at the World Cup when he signed Sanchez. He's working while what was doing, he doing it. What was he doing? Oh, this is a good question. Someone from Harbour, they said, if you had a choice, yeah? Arsene Wenger, you, have you heard this madness that's been touted yet? Yeah? Go on. Have you heard that? You know, like a Griezmann, uh, Lewandowski, etc. If you had yeah. a choice now, you could have Griezmann or Lewandowski or Arsene Wenger to carry on as manager. Which would you choose? It's Arsene Wenger to carry on. Wow. That shows that your thought is more to Arsene Wenger than it no. is the club. No, it doesn't. Because Antoine Griezmann no, or because Lewandowski. without the manager to guide them, we'd be, we'd be worse off. No chance. Plenty of managers that would love to take over. Do you think we, do you think we are guiding and motivating? I mean, it's early days still, but as, as a whole from seasons that previously happened, do you think we do have a motivated manager on the touchline? I do. You, you know, you don't all have to be jumping around, screaming instructions. He, he motivates the guys in a different way. I don't see any motivation for many of them players. I I've seen most of you. I mean, the only real time was City away when we um, secured fourth uh, place, basically for Champions League. It was Man City away. Then he actually looked thrilled. Yeah, he actually you, can, you can see the passion and the desire is still there in his eyes to do no. well. He loves the club. No, he doesn't love the club. He doesn't love the club he like us fans. He does not love this club like us fans. Yeah. No chance. Yes, he does. No, yes, he does. absolutely no chance. No chance. Don't even try that one. No chance. Arsene Bing is not even. Don't even come close. Don't even come he, close. He, he loves lives, the paycheck. He lives and breathes Arsenal Football Club. Like no, I, said, he's I, live, like, I live and breathe Arsenal Football Club. He does. Z. I spend my hard-earned money. On Arsenal Football Club, he does. He earns twenty-three grand a week, a day. Sorry. It's not about the money. What do you mean? It's not about the money. Eight million pound a year. It, that does not. We matter. overspend yeah. as fans. Yeah, we overspend every single season. And he wants to sit there and have the nerve to turn around and say that players are overpriced and he's not willing to overspend. Well, that's fine. If you're not willing to overspend and you're not willing to go and break open the coffers of all that money you've got, go and lower the season ticket prices. Go and stop um, getting free shirts a season with Puma. Crap shirts as well. Do you know what I mean? I've seen condoms that are stronger than them shirts. That's got nothing to do with Wenger. What are you on about? It's all part of the whole thing, the whole regime, the whole commercial thing. He, Ivan Gazidis. Ask Wenger employed Ivan Gazidis. How many people do you know employ their CEO? He, he did not employ him. Yes, he did. He was on the actual fucking committee that employed him. Yeah. Don't give a... me that. Go learn your facts. Here's a question, right, from Mike Dandy. He said, do you also suspect that Wenger is scared of spending in order to avoid any accountability? Um... He, I don't think he is avoiding spending. He's waiting for the right player. He's, he's not, you know, panic. He's not panicked by him. This year we brought in El Nini and Exaka, so we brought in two quality players, and I reckon there'll be two more on the way. Why are they not being brought in already? He's working on it. Oh my! How, long, how many years has he been? What's the excuse for last season not buying a single outfield player during the whole summer? Well, I'd say that we didn't need one. Didn't need him. 
<laughs> we didn't need a striker last summer. Hey, on. Last year we finished above United, Chelsea, oh, Liverpool. Oh, here he goes again. Do you, have a record, do you have a little button that you press that just repeats what you say? No, no. Well, if you if you ask me the same questions, I'll say the same answers. We we needed a world class striker since Van Persie left. There was one available last summer. You can go and get him. Can I, can I just jump in, guys? That uh, a striker, not not a bad striker, cost us just uh, secured three points for West Ham in the ninety second minute. There you go. Um, Hold on, I've got to get them up. I was trying to look at that update as well. Have you got any more questions for me while I get all these through? I've got so many. Um, right, this one is from the Arsenal 1886. Just to clarify, 1886, not 1996. Do our current performances justify Wenger's wage? Again, the, the money, we keep going on about the money. I don't think, you know, he's a, he's a top manager. You've got to pay the top whack for top managers. If you bring the Simeone, he's going to be on more than that. Yeah, and he'll deliver. He won't sit there and do off for that. We, we don't know that. We don't know what's going to happen after well, he goes. I'm, I, I'm, I'm I ready worry, we will, will slip. Love it. We will slip. And he would, uh, see, there's people here that, like, uh, Ahmed Robo, he says about um, Arsene Wenger, he just sits on the bench and doesn't. Um, don't get me started on Steve Bold, Mourinho, Simeone, Conte, etc. They wouldn't let teams collapse in that way. When, when Wenger goes, I really worry we are going to end up 7th, 8th for a good few seasons, and then, if not worse, that is my opinion. And I think, as Arsenal fans over the years, we've been spoiled, really spoiled. And I think it's a shame we, that we, we a lot of spoiled. the WOBs, I mean, if Wenger had started his reign mid-table and then started you know, winning leagues now, I think it would be a different story. Absolutely not. The fact is, is the whole lie is it's the fact that he neglects the squad. He's, even he's some overachieved. Our, even he's he is overachieved for a long time. He has not overachieved. He's even some of our greatest players. What do you make of comments by the likes of Emmanuel Petit? Right? Yeah, With what, yeah. what do you make of comments only yesterday from the likes of Thierry Henry? Please don't tell me you're going to try and disrespect Thierry Henry. No. With our greatest End of you know, so is he clueless? Is Thierry Henry clueless in what he no, said? No, but they're working for, uh, in theory, jur journalists. So what, got, Thierry's lying? They've got to sell a story. They've got to, you know, oh, get, get bollocks. in. You're telling me Thierry's lying? What, tell me what he said. You, you haven't actually seen what he said? I have, but remind me. Well, if you've seen it, why do I need to remind you? You know exactly what he said, and I'm asking you a question. Are you saying that Thierry, because he's working on Sky and in the media, he's fabricating and lying just to tell a story? Tell or me, he's saying what he's saying? Give, or give me the quote of what he said. Oh, my God. Does it not? Is, you know, I mean, I'm seeing people tweet now that they're, you know, they're so frustrated that they're seeing the likes of Conte and Mourinho and, and Klopp and many more managers actually engaging with the fans, motivating the team. You know, they get. I mean, Klopp's celebrations with the players. You know, he's pumping his chest. He's getting the players players going. You know, they're bundling each other because it's jubilation and it's joy with the team. But there's pictures going around of Aaron Ramsey staring at at, at Wenger. You know, in like frustration and just unmotivated. You know, does that not affect you just a little bit? Yeah. You know, just you I, know, just seeing those I, pictures. I understand your point, and you put it across a lot better than DT does. That, but I think it's just a different way of managing, and that's that's Arsene Wenger's way of doing it. Their their style is different, and it's there's not a right or wrong way to do it. I don't think it's what it's how they manage, and you know Wenger is still passionate. You still see him on the top touchline. You know you can see when we score. You know he's up and down. He's 65 years old now. He can't be on the sidelines giving it the big one all game. But I'm sure in the change room, and we we don't see him for the whole week at the training ground. We don't know what he does, you know, behind closed doors. But I think all the players respect him. All the players want to play for him, and the passion is still there. See, this is this is from Sinister 0208, right? And it kind of touches on what I said earlier. But in the, he defines it a little bit more. He says, to ask you, is it acceptable that Wenger spent a month? Now, remember, you said he's allowed a holiday. That he spent a month on French TV. And yet our team is not ready for the start of the Premier League season. I'll say again, I don't think he was just 
working for French TV. I think he was working for Arsenal Football Club at the same time, trying to bring in players. Where? What? Who? Where? There's, there wasn't even any rumours during the Euros. We all know that you know rumours come out and players get mentioned, etc. Just like the Vardy thing, just like Mares has been, etc. There was nothing, not a thing, not a peep, quiet, dead. It, because we keep it quiet, you know. Wenger has got to tell yes. us fans what he's. No, it to doesn't. Do. It, no, because if he keeps it totally quiet, we would never have heard about Shaka. We would have never heard about El Nenny. We would have never heard about. All this stuff leak. Arsenal have mouthpieces within the media who turn around and fill the media with bits and pieces that you need to know. Yeah? But Man United, they're not even in the Champions League and they went about their business. Jose Mourinho said, right, they're the four players I want. Go get them. Bang. Before the first game of the Premier League season, ready. See ya. Done. Conte come into Chelsea and said, right, one of the things I want is defensive midfielder. We're not even in Europe. I don't care. The best defensive midfielder right now is Kante at Leicester. I don't care if Leicester won the league. Go put the money on the table. Go get me that player. Bang. Week later, in the bag. Why don't we do that? Because we faff around. What was the root? What was the stories that come out today from um, Ornstein of all people, the mouthpiece, as people call him, the Messiah, right? He turned around and said the whole Mustafi thing. He said that it's it's still up in the air because we're haggling over the price. We're we're bitching with Valencia over the price. You know we we can't believe only the only person who knows is Arsenal Football Club. We can't go on rumours and what other people say if we're haggling. Why is it not done then? Why is it not done then? It's the player who wants to stay at Valencia. You know. No, he doesn't. Vale Everyone knows, and it's even in the media that he wants to come. The one sticking point is the price. He's got a £42 million release clause with Valencia. They're selling him less than that because they're in financial difficulties. right? Valencia want around £30 million. We're trying around £20 million. We're trying to mug them off. All right? Sometimes you have to sit there and go, do you know what? Yeah, let's go in with the price. And you know, At the end of the day, he's got a £42 million, million pound release clause. We're getting him for 30. Look, he's 24 years old. He's going to be with us for a long time. Let's Again, go. Again, I don't think that's Wenger. That's the Arsenal board could go and get him. No, no. If you was at the AGM last year, Chips Keswick was asked the question, and so is Ivan Kazidis on many occasions, who is in charge of um, transfers, etc.? What, what's, what's the process? And they all turned around and said, Arsene Wenger's in charge of it all. Every bit of it. He identifies the player. He gives the go-ahead, whether they bid for him. He gives the the ceiling price of what he feels they're valued at. And, yeah, he, he, and, he gives and, advice. No, no, no. He sets it, right? And Ivan can see this and that has already said. If he turns around and says, no, don't want that player, too much, don't want it, no. They don't turn around and say, well, I think we need this player. You know, like a David Dean used to do. David Dean used to go and do the job for him. Half of our greatest players are because of David Dean. Oh, but, you know, it's, it's an agenda against Wenger, this is. It's no, just, it isn't. It's a fact. It's, it's a fact. It's, it's a sad fact. That you're obsessed it's with David it. David Dean that even brought Arsene Wenger to Arsenal. And everybody but, knows that Arsene Wenger never used to deal with the transfers. He used to say, oh, look, I want this player, I want that player. David Dean used to be the man who used to go off get the job done, there was no fucking about, bang. Yeah? I remember when we signed Sol Campbell, that was because of David D. Yeah? It, would that have got done now? Would Sol Campbell, if Sol Campbell was get available right now, would Arsenal get him? No. Not a hoping else chance. David Dean done most of the dirty work. I'm telling you. And Wenger was very lucky with a back four he inherited. Very lucky when he came in because he had one of the best back fours you'll ever see in this country. He, he turned them into one of the best back fours you've ever seen in this country. What? What, did, yeah. what are you on about? He improved the diet. The attitude. Improved the diet makes them better. In yeah. 1991, they conceded 18 fucking league goals all season. How can you sit there and disrespect Lee Dixon, Nigel Whitburn, Tony Adams and say that Arsene made them... What? They were colossal anyway. 
speak to any of them, Martin Keown said Arsene Wenger gave him another three years on his career. But that doesn't make them better. Arsene Wenger made them better than what they were. Of course he did. No, he didn't. They if were you go from drink, If you go how from dare drinking, you, how dare you even try and insinuate well, on, that let, they let were not before point, Arsene Wenger? Let me Bollard. back up my point. If you go from drinking 20 pints a week to zero pints a week, a better training re regime, a better diet, you're going to be a better player. That's fact. That's what Arsene no, Wenger did for him. Speak they still, Tony Adams, even when he come back, they still, it's up here. Okay? Everything they have, they built their self. Arsene Wenger had nothing to do with our famous back four. He, he gave him the edge. They had yeah. edge before he came anyway. I'm not saying they didn't. They were I'm European saying. winners. They were European trophy winners. They were league title winners before Arsene Wenger came along. So he, he gave them, he gave them that extra 5%. Listen, they don't need it. They were warriors. They were winners anyway. They didn't need no extra. That made he changed their diet. It doesn't mean that he made them better. Behave, will ya? Behave. You're talking absolute drivel, man. Made the back four better. They were... Yeah. No, no, no. You're talking absolute rubbish. How can you even sit there and say that's disrespectful to them? I'm saying then he gave them 5% more. Oh, my life. This is like arguing with my five-year-old. It's so... You are just never, ever going to accept... That Liam, do you agree with that? <laughs> so I kind of uh, dipped, drifted up. What was uh, the topic? I'm saying that Arsene Wenger gave our famous back four that extra 5% because of the diet, the right. band oh, drinking, no, 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 no. the training, you said, all of that. You said, and we'll be able to rewind this and go back to it later, just like we did the last time we were on and I proved you wrong. You said that he made them. I said he made them better. No, you never said that. You said he made them. No, he made them better. All right, I'll prove you wrong later, don't worry. <laughs> right, then we'll right, find that. Jesus Christ, let's go through some more questions. How many more of the same type of performances will it take for you to realise the manager is the problem? And that's from Liam Partridge. I don't, I don't think there will be many more performances. Like that. I mean, the first half, we could have been out of sight. We dominated them. It could have been 2-3-0. We missed the penalty. We were unlucky with a few chances. On another day, we'd have easily won that game. How many times have we said that before? It happens. What do you mean it happens too much with Arsenal? Do you remember Liverpool 5-1? Do you remember Chelsea 6-0? Do you remember Man United 8-2? Um, yeah, even last know. season we got humiliated at Sheffield Wednesday 3-0. Um, yeah, every team loses. Every team loses. No, there's a difference between losing and being embarrassed and mugged off and made to look like dickheads. Got battered 5-1 by Bayern Munich over there as well. well, we beat not them as well. Everyone understands that you lose games. That's not the issue. We all know that you can lose games. It's about the manner of losing them. We capitulated yesterday. I think it's even more frustrating that Arsenal fans would probably actually, you know, because we know the funds are there, it, it makes us even more frustrating. We, you know, let, let's be honest, the ticket prices, the merchandise prices, and the, and the burgers, the hot dogs, you know, you know, but they give you a free program. I mean, that's always a little bonus. I don't want to throw not a bitch. <laughs> you know, I just, does it not frustrate you, Governor, just a little bit? As an Arsenal fan for many years, does it just not... Take Wenger out of this. Just with the money itself, it must frustrate you a little bit that you know you're showing your, your support. You just want him, them to invest maybe a bit of money, correctly of course, you know, in the quality and the strikers and showing that Arsenal Football Club is one of the best in Europe. Of course, of course I do. It's just, not I just don't think the criticism of him. I mean, it's just get if you add hundred million now. Who would you sign? Like, who, who is there realistically you can go and sign that will improve us? And I, think, I think every I, I honestly think every player has a price. I'll Antoine, be honest with you. Antoine Griezmann. Antoine Griezmann. I'll give you a name right there. Right? I'll be honest with you. I think it'll cost like eighty-five million pounds. Got an eighty-five million pound uh, relief clause. At the end of the day, in this in this day and age, it's a risk. But well, it's, you know, it's, it's, I think you, you're talking about the board again. If the board said to to Arsene. We've got the money. We're going to take Griezmann. He's not going to say no. That's a fair point. That's a fair point. What's that? I didn't actually listen. I said if if you know if if the, if the board say to Arsene we're signing Griezmann, Wenger, Wenger's not going to say no, thank you. Yeah, but it ain't the board. It's Arsene Wenger, and he put his foot in it last week when he said that money's not an issue. If we identify a player that fits the criteria, job done. 
Well, why aren't the board signing Griezmann then? Because Arsene Wenger's not uh, authorising it. Yeah. He's the one that authorises it. Yeah, but he's and, and one of the requirements. Answer me this, actually. I wanted to ask you about this one. Arsene said one of his four requirements when they look at buying a player is resale value. Do you not think that's absolutely ludicrous? Well, you, you've got to think realistically. You know, if if you sign a thirty-five-year-old for a lot of money, you're not going to get anything back. It's you, you've got to think about these things. He's, you know, he, he probably regrets saying that, but that is something you've got to look look at. Right, the other three you, things are probably ninety-five percent of it. That five percent is that resale value. Would you? Yeah. All right. Let, let, let's say for argument's sake, I'm thinking who is available that's on that. Right. Let's take Ibrahimovic. Right. Thirty-four, thirty-five years old. Right. Didn't cost a penny, but would have cost two hundred to two hundred fifty pound, thousand pound in wages. Yeah. If he would have come in for the season and won us the league or the Champions League, would you have said that was a great investment or it was a waste of money? Of course, yeah, of course. But then he, he was always going United. But, you know, we could not get in on that deal. No one else got involved. Nobody tried. Because, <clears> because they knew he was going United. His heart was set on going to United. He wanted the thing to is, play is for Arsene, Man Wenger, Arsene Wenger contradicts himself constantly. Over and over and over, he contradicts himself. He sits there and he talks about all these things, his signings, transfers and everything, and he just contradicts himself and puts his foot in it. Seven days ago, he was asked after Man City, are you ready for the new season? And he said, physically, we are ready. It got beat yesterday, and they asked him the same question, and he said, no, nah, we're not physically ready. He, he had to say that a week ago. You know, you can't give any team an edge. If Liverpool had, we weren't ready... As a manager, he had to say that, even if he didn't believe it. What are you on about? There's managers that have come out over this last week or so that have been have said straight away about their team. Everyone knows at the start what, of the season. One of Arsenal's great strengths is he always backs the players. He always backs the team. He, that's his, no, no, that's not his strength. That's his weakness. What, so you think he should have come out and said, oh, we're not ready for the Liverpool game after the players are unfit, we're missing, blah, blah, blah. No, of course No, he wouldn't come out and say it like that, but don't sit there and talk absolute drivel and say that they're actually physically ready because you can say that they're ready for the game you can say they're up for it they're ready but don't try telling people that they're physically ready that they're prepared they're mentally right and then a week later going no they weren't he well, sits there it, 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 you can only find out after the first game you know he, he's not a mind reader well you should know you talk about all the analy analytics and everything all the time he's meant to be a genius he should know everything you know well, I think it's safe to say we've been going over an hour now, and uh, yeah. the, the comments we've been getting has been has been quite funny. Um, but obviously, we're going to have to wrap it up um, at some point. Um, it has been a very end-to-end -end, um, debate. I think it's safe to say. Um, obviously, before we go, um, obviously, we'll um, you know basically at the end of it, you know, whatever your your thoughts on it of Arsene Wenger or. You know, whatever you think of this debate or anything like that, you know, we're all Arsenal at the end of the day, and we want to collectively, you know, try and push onwards. Even if we we love Wenger so much or we hate him so much, you know, we all want one thing. That's for Arsenal Football Club to try and be as successful as possible. Um, obviously, you can um, find Arsenal Governor on Twitter if you want to um, give him a follow at Arsenal Governor. Um, obviously, you can follow DT. Um, I think you might know who he is already though at DJ DT. Um, and you can follow me on Twitter at Liam P.O. Edwards. Also have a YouTube channel, Guna News TV. Um, the links are in the description for that if you like more Arsenal content. Um, but thank you very much um, to everyone watching. Uh, it's been a pleasure to host as always. I'll let the two lads uh, finish off with what they've got to say. Can I just say one thing? Can I just say one thing? I've just seen a question that just made me laugh, actually. Oh, please, I've got to ask this. West Ham bid for Lacazette, yeah? Right now they bid 35 million, there or thereabouts, and it was refused by the Leon. They said no, too low, jog on. Why did we two weeks later go in with a lower bid? Why did we? How disrespectful is that? And how much of a does that make us a laughing stock? I think we were testing the water. Testing the water. West Ham had already fucking tested it. Leon told them to piss off. <laughs> So what, what did you think Leon were going to do? Oh, do you know what, Arsene? You're French. So, yeah, you know what? You can have a discount. 
off you go. Yeah, I walked into the Arsenal Armoury the other day, right, picked up a kit, went in there, and said, there you go, £26.50. They looked at me like I was deluded. And I was like, well, what? Arsenal's, Arsenal's law, innit? Why can't I? And then when they asked, why do I think that I'm going to get something for so cheap? I told them, well, it's got no resale value. And they called security. That's what they need to do to Arsenal, call security, get him section, take him away, because he's gone in, He's gone up there. Can I just, before we go, just thank all, all the people on Twitter who are supporting me and sort of all the, all the thank you messages and uh, support <laughs> I've had. Just because, you know, I know... What DT planet was that on? Down. What planet was that on? Because it was not Earth. So, Could you please... I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, Governor, right? All of them messages, right? You've just read that off like you've won an Oscar, Yeah. So you might want to thank your mum, your dad, your cats, your dogs, and everyone else, right? Please screenshot all those messages yeah. right, and put them up on Twitter so that we can see all your messages of support. No problem. All right, we'll be waiting for that. Are you also going to put up a um, another poll that you want? Yeah, to we'll be we'll be doing a poll. You can, let, you can put another poll up asking who won this debate, and then you can delete it in a few hours when you realise I have, like last time. Well, and it, this was one last question that someone asked me: If Arsene Wenger run off with you with your missus, would you take a positive out of it? <laughs> Good night. <laughs> I'm gonna listen to that. Good night,